Greetings, fellow dwarves. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds, Episode 20 A Cozier Tavern. How do you control the pop settings? Settings, game, and then here's all the pop cap stuff. It's just in the options. So, population cap, strip population cap, baby plus child cap, baby plus child cap percentage of total, visitor cap, seed cap, so on and so forth. Alright, so you're teched. Furniture, slab, here. Memorial to teched. You are Kel and Dakin. Dak. Oh, it's Adel Dakin. Okay, so Dakin is Adel. I got it. I got it. So, uh, furniture, slab, Adel. And then we need a slab for Kel, which I think we're currently carving. Yep, we're currently carving. I haven't forgot about the uh, the temple here. It just took a a deep back seat. Uh, but I am. Do I have an armor smith? I do. Okay. Do I have a blacksmith? I don't. Congratulations, uh, Pro Knight. You're a blacksmith now, too. So, blacksmith, you are going to make me other copper altar. Shell figurine. Oh, cool. That's uh, our second shell figurine. We had, or I guess our last one was a jet one. So we have two figurines, and, and that could go into the new temple once it's uh, ready to go. We're still working on that. It's kind of a side project. Well, the flooring in the pit is almost done. You can see it from the uh, level above. And then I'm just changing the way the walls are to accommodate the new design. So up here, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, changing the design. But I'm very eager for this project to be done because it's going to allow for us to open up the doors for a lot of immigrants soon. Alright, so we have the human caravan coming in. Ooh, and a lot of miasma because of this corpse here. Who is you? You're a dwarf, but were you ever a, a colonist? Your name is Kazi? I don't see you as one of mine, so you were a guest. I think you were the one, maybe the you're, maybe you're the mace dwarf that was like messing with my dogs. That'd be my next best guess. I didn't actually check who the mace dwarf was, but uh, you're causing a bit of a stink here, dude. So get in the pit. So here you can see the um, the stuff getting thrown into the pit. It's already working. We'll just huck it into the pit. Eventually, I can turn that into an atom smasher if I want. I don't know if uh, I'm going to be doing that anytime soon, but it's definitely a possibility. But it'd be great if the children would haul that rotted corpse away. Someone's uh, has it queued up. There, there we go. So now we just hucked him into the pit. 
All right. Uh, when you return, uh, bring cow leather. And you want musical instruments and toys. More toys, huh? All right. So let's go ahead and trade with them. Because in order to keep us clothed, I'm going to want to buy as much fabric and the like as I can. Looking at the screen also reminds me to get rid of our backpacks for our military, so I'll be doing that in a minute as well. So in order to do that, go to the stocks and dump the bags. I don't care if they have a value, it's not very high. Oh, here comes the wagons. So you can see the wagons uh, traveling around the edge of the moat, coming up the ramp here, and then down the main ramp. So, in other words, uh, this works. Works as designed as, as a uh, as a, a way to delay foot traffic from reaching our uh, our important bits of our base. So, I'd like to have an actual moat in this brook, so I'm actually going to change this brook a bit. I'm going to channel out the brook uh, so that we can put a bridge here that works functionally as a bridge. So the brook is actually not getting deeper, it's just getting different. You can think of the brook... Um, this is what helped me think of the brook. You can think of it as... Um, as a full of stones allowing you to cross on foot and channeling it out removes the stones so it's not getting deeper as you can see it's just changing its um uh whether you can walk across it or not and these willow logs i'm just gonna hide so i don't have to see them they're still there technically same with this dolomite but uh out of sight out of mind that's why the hide tools here right We're dumping uh, that stuff into the water. Perhaps I'll wait for... You know, I don't even care. Channel here, too. Oh, there's a lot of stacks of willow here now. So here you can see the dump working. We have corpses and backpacks and stuff that we don't want. You like this fortress? Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm working hard to make it uh, visually interesting and highly functional as a somewhat new player. I appreciate the encouragement. Where's Hazel? Wood. There it is. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to do is to design this to be a bit of a gatehouse. So that's uh, that's what I'm working on. But let's get that bridge down. So constructions, bridge. Oops, wrong way. Uh, and then this will be another cinnabar bridge. So I think I need to cut some cinnabar because I need five for this bridge and I don't have five. So, rock blocks out of cinnabar, repeat, and rock blocks out of jet, repeat. I'm also changing these stairs a little bit. As you can see, so that they're wider and we don't have traffic jams. I'm trying to design for volume. 
The other thing I need to do is I need to remove these stairs, because these stairs are a massive shortcut for people on foot. But I'm going to do that after we do the massive amount of hauling of the uh, the wood. Uh, moods definitely not gotten better. Um, child, your clothes, you... It's mostly the miasma of the corpses, I think. I'm not going to go into great lengths to figure out what it was. I'm just going to keep working. Alright, they have cages for camels, a sow, no thanks. I'm mostly wanting textiles from them. Oh my god, how much junk do you have? I, d I could buy clothing outright, but I'd rather make my own clothing out of textiles, uh, thereby leveling up my own... Um, my own tailors and leather crafters. So they only have donkey leather. They don't have any cloth, it looks like. Fish. Oh, they do have uh, threads. I'll buy their threads. Heck of a lot of cheese, dude. What, you've come from Green Bay or something? Alright, let's sell. I'm going to sell just porcelain junk. I have a lot of cowl and I have turned into porcelain artifacts for sale, so that will do. I don't know what they're paying more for right now. I don't even really care. Oh, I'm already at green trader profit, so. Holy cow. There, trade, done. Got that leather. What about selling tattered clothing? I'll get around to that eventually. Um, there's a big reason to sell tattered clothing. It's when clothing becomes masterwork, it becomes upsetting to your um, uh, to your tailor if you destroy it, and it's better to sell it. Uh, I don't have a tailor capable of making like masterwork stuff just yet, so I'm not too concerned about that, and I'm going to manage one project at a time. So I'm doing this project, and other projects I don't care about until later is the TLDR. How important is meat and fish? Uh, not very. Dwarves don't eat very often. So you don't want to run out of food, but it's also not one of those things where it's like, you're going to have to get a mass amount of them. I have enough food. It's what, two meals per dwarf per season or something? I have enough food to feed like 500 dwarves and I have a population of 28. Can tattered stuff be repaired? No. Much like RimWorld. Once tattered, always tattered. Back to the smelters. We're still melting metal objects. I'm going to actually add some melt metal objects. I'm going to do it on two smelters so we can catch up a little bit. But if we take a look, I bet a lot of the copper... No, actually, we still have some bronze and copper stuff here to be melted down. Iron cap, let's melt that too. Anything that isn't my steel, like these iron shields, I'll melt down. Uh, this boot I can toss. It's totally tattered. This boot's pretty tattered. I can set a, uh, a quality modifier here to not include tattered stuff, and I'll do that later once I'm not busy with other things. Moat first. So, do I have the materials to make the bridge? I do? Perfect. How can you tell if something's tattered? It will have X's in it. One small X is worn, uh, a large X is threadbare, and um, a two large X's is mangled. Let me, let me try to show you an example. So, here's a large X. So if we ins inspect, it is heavily worn. Uh, here's a small X. If we inspect, it is uh, somewhat worn. And then if there's two large X's, like this glove, um, this object is in tatters. So any, any objects with X's uh, you don't want to wear. A small X being worn is not a problem. It just means it's going to totally wear out soon. But large X's are a problem. So the uh, this, this skirt here, 
would upset a dwarf if they were wearing it. Its glove would be upsetting, so on and so forth. So you're just trying to avoid uh, situations where you're stuck wearing tattered stuff. Because it's one of those, uh, it's one of those things that it's very easy to have a mood spiral if you're wearing a bunch of tattered stuff. Where if you don't have good clothing for your dwarves, uh, they get really upset really fast. Right, let's see if I have the jet for the stairwell. Do good. And then the other part of the redesign here, I, I did mention, uh, I wanted a gatehouse, but I'm I'm not going to set up the gatehouse until a lot of this wood hauling is done. Because if I, well, I can start it, I guess. So it's going to just be a very simple gatehouse. Uh, I'll have it be slightly wider. Just bear with me. And then I want to set the gatehouse up in such a way that when the door or when the bridge is pulled, uh, the bridge bridges, when they're raised, act as walls. So I'm setting it up so that the gatehouse gets walled in. Uh, thereby, perhaps, if roofed off, uh, acting as an anti-air defense as well. Uh, not that it's going to be designed that way for first iteration, but like eventually maybe that will be useful. Okay, so that's a, just a little external gatehouse. And then what I'm planning on doing is, uh, and I'll, I'll set the cage up now, is I'm going to put the nickel cage that I, I bought uh, right here, and I'm going to stick a dog in it. That way, if uh, enemy enemies are coming in, the dog will spot the, uh, the uh, likely will spot the enemy that's on, the, um, on this external cinnabar bridge, allowing me time to raise this bridge to prevent them from crossing the moat. So I cannot prioritize hauling. Um, not really. There are some ways to prioritize hauling. Like one way, if, if you have a lot of children, for instance, is you can go to uh, labor and go to standing orders for chores. And this is the chores that children do. So right now, children do chores except for burial. But if you wanted them just to haul, you can specify what kind of hauling. So if I wanted them just to haul wood, I could turn everything off but wood, and then the children here will just haul wood. So that would be like priority hauling. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, create a new job. So if I create a new job and set it up as just like uh, wood hauling, and then call it wood hauler, hauler, I could give someone this job, like... Uh, like this stone cover, I could say you're a wood hauler now and you can only do wood hauling. And that way they're obligated to just haul wood. So there's a few different ways to do it, but there isn't like an easy way like in RimWorld where you can just go one and everyone hauls. Um, it, it's a little bit more involved. And not for a specific item, no. There might be better ways to do it, because I am a relatively new player, but, like, those are the ones that at least I know about. Oh, I need more hazelwood. Well, hazelwood tree. I am allotted a certain amount of trees that I'm allowed to cut down from the my agreement with the elves, so I'll just make sure that I cut hazelwood and pine more than anything else. Oh, and this bridge is done. So this is going to be the brook bridge. And because I um I channeled out the brook, this is not passable unless you can swim. So it stops um 
it stops non-swimming enemies from being able to mess with me. So that's good. And we're getting it linked. And now I'm just updating the fortifications up top because they're out of date. Yeah, we're getting miasma from the pit, aren't we? I have to make it deeper. What is even down there that's rotting? I don't, I don't even see anything that would warrant rot, but whatever. It's a bad place for trash. I'll set up a better place soon. Make ballista parts times three. Really? Really? Fine. Uh, all right. Uh, workshops, siege. I'm just going to put a temporary one here so that I can make the three ballista parts to keep our, our counter, whatever they are. What are you now? Yeah, our count happy. Because it's relatively easy to do, but it's annoying. So now that this layer is all excavated, let's start doing the wood hauling because I am almost ready to open up the migrant floodgates and raise our population. So in here, I'm just going to set this up as wood. Temporary wood. So the reason why I haven't, uh, I haven't remove this north bridge or remove these south stairs. Oh, another crossbowman trying to mess with me. Uh, but he chose to flee instead. Is Because uh, all this wood out here is going to be really, really, really much harder to get once I finish this, because then the path to get it in the base is just all that much longer. So that's... I was holding off until we hauled at least some of this wood, because it's, it's just going to be so much more annoying. So, ballista parts. One, two, and three. And I'll specify bayberry wood. Uh, there's a bunch of bedrooms that might be missing stuff. Let, let me check. Two coffers missing. Got it. Uh, back to the temple project that I was working on. Trying to multitask as best as I can. put in the copper altar and then the cinnabar pedestal and then engrave it up and dedicate it. Oh, did I put a second coffer? in one of these rooms. I don't see the mistake. Oh yeah, right there. Nope, that should be a bed. Done. Do I have enough bedrooms to unlock the pop cap? Um, nearly. That's, uh, once I have the wood hauled and I, that, that's sort of the next step. Uh, so let's put a dog in here. 
So this stray war dog is going to go into the nickel cage as a lookout. All right, temple time. Now that we're, oh yeah, this is almost ready to go. And I'll start engraving the floors while we add the walls. And then eventually I'll add the wall engravings too. There were other projects that I wanted to do as well uh, that I haven't gotten around to yet. Well, this is a pretty good start. All right, so there's my lookout dog. We have the sort of the gatehouse all set up except for one floor. And then this here is getting the wood hauling. So you can see all the children here hauling the wood into this lair. A watchdog, exactly. <laughs> the dogs are adorable? Well, thanks. I only have two of the three here with me right now, but uh, at some point, all of them will join. So I'll probably not wait around for all of the wood to be hauled because it's just a lot of it it's uh, 1100 of it but at least a little bit so that we don't severely inconvenience ourselves uh so the really ballistic parts got done and then she's like all right statues now um for these statues i'm gonna do something different i am going to make metal ones because she also is going to want uh, a better... One, one of the things she's demanding is um, a nicer office. So furniture, silver, statue. So this will help me offer her, because you can see it, the needs aren't quite met for her quarters. What I'm going to need to do is to go down here and uh, redesign the barony quarters to a countess quarter. I, I didn't really account for her to become the countess uh, as early as she did. So those facilities aren't good enough. I'm just checking in with the moodiest. No one's had any um, mental breaks in a while, which is good, but uh, they are in the dumps. Some of it is just like, like, for instance, with uh, Zach Dyer, Zach was wearing, like, completely tattered clothing, but wouldn't give it up. Just dwarf things, right? So let's dedicate this temple, I guess. Meeting area. Looks like that. Minus this spot. 
Done. And this is going to be a new temple to... I forget. Let me make sure who I know this is going to. So we have got Alad, Adil, Asmal, Ostar, Reg. So this is to Burr. Eight worshippers. Temple of Wealth. That's what this is going to be named. So the Temple of Wealth. Open to only longtime visitors. No randos. And then on this display, we got a figurine. We can put here the shale one and that will help to raise its value all right i am going to go to the settings now i think we are ready to raise pop to 40. so next migrant season uh, we'll see about that there's also some other projects that i wanted to get done so right now the current priority is Hall wood to stockpile and then remove old bridges. Redesign the tavern. So redesigning the tavern and yeah, redesigning the tavern is going to be what I'm working on now. Uh, it's a tiny redesign that I have in mind, so it's really not a big deal, but uh, I wanted to get it done anyway. So the new concept that I'm going to go with is going to be a tavern that um, encourages people to be near one another. Is I think the TLDR. So we've removed that stuff. Cool. So some of these statues are going to go back. Cinnabar. Cinnabar. And then the silver stuff I'm going to put in the barony uh, to try to improve the quality here. So we have silver statues. I'll put one here and one here and see if that raises the bedroom and office requirement. Oh, it's of a creepy bat. And a cat. Looks like a zoo bat or something. I don't know. You're enjoying my approach to the game? It's slow. It's steady. It's not particularly exciting yet. Uh, but it's stable. And as a new player, I think that's what's really important. is slow and stable. But uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I cannot approve of me putting the doggo into the gauge. Yeah, I don't like it either. Uh, eventually, once I have an actual military and not just a few dudes that know how to use an axe, I'll probably have my military force up there instead. But for now, you know, it we gotta we gotta make do. So the other thing I wanted to do is the um, the smeltables that are in that stockpile here. Uh, let me find the stockpile. Uh, so we've got tetrahydrate. Limonite and bitterness coal. I'm gonna start to uh, smelt those. So we have the bit coal, and then I will smelt the limonite and the tet, just so that we pull it out of that stockpile. We're starting to make masterwork trousers. Um, I just saw that the the clothier was and the leather worker was starting to make masterworks. 
So at some point, maybe what I'll do is I'll have a tattered clothing stockpile to sell. Because if you destroy Masterworks, it upsets the crafter. But if you sell them, it's fine. So it's a it's sort of um, a workaround for their moods. And if you can see up here, I am not tending their moods very well. So that's another project to be done. But let me focus on the project at hand. So this is the tavern redesign. Uh, I am going to be encouraging my dwarves to um, to sort of eat and drink around one another instead of what I'm currently doing which is they're all like very separate so I'm planning on keeping the booze in the center here because pretty much dwarves don't really use tables like they just grab their booze and they drink they're very, very impatient creatures. So, um, I'm just going to have a giant, like, stock room of the kegs in the center. Uh, and then we still have a dance floor in the north. And it looks like I need more jet if I want jet floors. So, I will start with the jet floors and then I'll have to cut more jet. This is plenty of jet. Why haven't we dumped this stuff? I also haven't slabbed uh, the last slab, have I? Kind of forgot. This is Kel's slab. We'll have some additional free uh, tombs for when I screw up. Or when we just uh, honestly get attacked. Because sometimes it's really not my fault. Like that dude attacked me and my three Mark Storbs decided to try to punch him with the crossbow instead of actually kill him. And that's not exactly on me. As far as I'm concerned. Four freed ones. Let's check back on that temple. Oh yeah, so the wall got done, but we haven't uh, engraved anything. So some of these engravings might... Uh, I did mention this uh, last stream, but engravings affect the side that you're standing in. So some of the engravings on the north wall, or this one and this one, might affect the other temple instead. There's no telling uh, which side it's engraved in unless you like want to mi min-max it. If you wanted to min-max it, what you could do is you could like build walls here to block them, like this, so that they have to engrave from the inside. But I don't care enough, and it also doesn't change the wealth of the room enough for it to matter. The wealth of this room is mostly determined by the relics and artifacts placed in it, not so much an engraving or two. <sighs> more mandates! I just finished your last mandates. Oh, more statues? I can live with that. So, let's make some additional statues. Furniture, silver, statue. Yeah, that's very creepy to sleep next to. A silver statue of a hungry head. Well. It's your problem, not mine. But it has uh, resolved the need for a fancier dining room and bedroom. So I'm going to put this next two statues in the office in the crypt. The hungry head would make sense more in the dining room, but I'd rather keep it staring at uh, our countess uh, while she sleeps. 
so that she knows that if she pisses me off, we eat her. <laughs> I like your crazy uh, punnage in chat here. <laughs> it's great. Oh, we have the dwarf caravans or wagons now coming in. And uh, they're they're gonna use this north bridge, cause uh, why not? Why wouldn't they? But soon we'll have them routed along the route long way. There's still plenty of room for wood though. But here's their wagons. Oh no, they are uh, they're not using the north bridge. I oh, cause the cage is in the way. Yeah, that's right. Because they can't pass through by the cage. So, yeah. You can see them coming in. This probably helps um, players unfamiliar with Dwarf Fortress actually visualize how this mode is laid out in 3D space. So that they, there's a bridge here that goes down to a ramp, down three levels to the moat. And then the moat has a bridge up here that then goes into the main entryway. So then you see the wagon come up and then down to the main entryway. Delicious! I love it. Uh, so when you guys come back, bring cow leather. I really just, I'm very hot for the cow leather. And they want windows? Yeah, screw that. Glass is, um, rhymes with glass and how difficult it is to make. Well, I'm gonna, I know that they're gonna have tons of pl plump helmets because dwarves always come with tons of plump helmets. So let's uh, put a lot of finished goods up for trade here. Another thing to do is to check my, um, whoa, I have 9k worth of ammo, to check my, um, my textiles. So, leather, I've got three spare tanned hides. Yeah, yeah, we're going to need to do some trading. Cloth, I have a decent amount of cloth. Oh, speaking of cloth, uh, the clothier just withdrew from society. You know, I think at this point, I am going to name my clothier. Uh, let's see. After one of you guys in chat. So here is a giveaway timer above my head. And uh, good luck. Just anyone, any subscriber that types in the chat is uh, eligible. I don't have the jet yet. Because we haven't mined it. Got it. Look at all them socks. No! No! I missed it by a second. She was conducting the meeting, or she was at the trade depot and then walked away. Come back. And a petition. No. Not hiring mercenaries. Or allowing mercenaries to stay. Alright, let's see. There's my donkey leather. We got all these plump helmets, good for booze. Some threads that we can spin. And that's probably it. The rest is just cheese and crutches and sheets, which I haven't gotten to yet. And luckily, I have a very thriving Kaolinite business making porcelain trinkets to sell. It was very easy for me to afford. Trade and done.
What is the clothier doing? Whoa! Clothier's making something interesting. They're grabbing, uh, magnetite and iron bars? The hell are you making, dude? I'm not gonna intervene and force him to use a better, uh... You know what? I take that back. I'm gonna try to encourage the clothier to, uh... to use a different metal. So I'm gonna lock the iron bars and force him to go grab, uh, hopefully steel. And the other thing I can do is I can go to stocks and bar and lock all of the iron bars so nobody can touch the iron bars. Lock the silver, lock the copper, lock the bronze, lock the brass. Oh, and look at that. Steel unlocked. Lock the pig iron, lock the plow. You know what? Let's make something out of platinum. I have no idea what, what he is making. But uh, we are going to heavily encourage him to make whatever it is in Platinum. And then I'm also going to pause the smelting that we have going on. So let's see. Whatever whatever you were trying to make, dude, make it out of Platinum. Oh, he grabbed Kaolinite too? What the earth is he making? So there it is. He hauled Platinum instead. So this is the one of the ways that you can um, influence strange moods. So I'm just forcing him to use platinum. He's gonna make like a platinum sock, isn't he? Yeah. I don't know what he's cooking. Kaolinite, platinum bars, leather, and wool. It's, it's gonna be interesting. But I haven't really intervened in uh, Strange Moods yet, so I just wanted to demo how. So here is how. The worry is, and don't do this late in the game, uh, because if you do this late in the game, what can end up happening is uh, they go, you you have about 40 days for them to fulfill what they want to grab. So if you um, if you mess with them really late, you can drive them insane. So you got to be careful about when you uh, pull the trigger and put your thumb on the scale. And then he grabs oval. Opal, wax opals. I think he's grabbing one more gem or something. And uh, we've got a name. Are you? No, wait, you're not the clothier. Who, where's the clothier? Solon, I think is his name. Labor, cloth tailor, Solon, Lycotel. All right, that's who I was naming you after. I think he's grabbing wood too. Where where else would he be going? I am so Yep, persimmon wood. Whatever this is, it is strange, man. It is some strange. So they put just Jay's name. All right, will do. Jay the Clothier. Next, we'll need Silent Bob, a town crier. And he has started. So now that he has started, um. I can unlock the locked stuff because it's not going to intervene anymore. And then remember to unlock everything when you're done because otherwise uh, you're going to have some weird stock problems. All right, wood. It's getting moved. If we had more more hands, it'd make shorter work for this. What about the temple? Uh, no progress. Cool. What about the bedrooms? All right. I think it's time, if we are planning on a pop boom, to build extra bedrooms so that when we do open... Our migration policy. 
we have a place for them to stay. Restart the smelters would be smart. Although, actually, I'm going to keep... Uh, no, I'm going to keep them paused, because I would rather the people, instead of uh, spending the effort smelting, uh, just work. I also have, like, incredibly bad moods everywhere. And you made an alpaca wool face veil. Aw, oh, man. A face veil that has, like, platinum in it. Feels like a waste. Whatever. It was a, it was an experiment. Uh, let's put that in this... In this, uh... Temple. Because we had a steel breastplates that was kind of not doing anything. It was a hold, uh, hold a temporary item. Oh, I ran out of silver for the silver statues, I think. Hmm. Oh, no, because it was locked. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's see the description. Uh, once it's uh, once it's in the sample, I'll put it in. There it is. This is an alpaca wool face veil. All crafts dwarf ship of it is of the highest quality. It is studded with platinum, decorated with alpaca leather. Holy cow! It is twenty-two or twenty-five thousand. Yeah, the platinum helped. I think the platinum helped. Um. And it's cushioned with magnetite, cabochons, and spiked with wax opal. And it has an two eight-sided long eight-sided what? Two eight-sided long eight-sided prisms. Wow, aren't you a wordsmith? And this is the zeroism. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this this temple is now. A giant temple complex because of the <laughs> the value of that uh, face veil. I, I I can only envision um, the the veil in D Dune or something. I don't know. Uh, J with an E Y. Got it. Where are you, J? Can I get my jet already? The answer to that is no. Thank you for tuning in to Dwarf Fortress Taming the Wilds, which originally streamed live on Twitch January 17th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow dwarves. 